during a murder investigation, gathering vital evidence is key to proving what happened and who committed the crime. Days after, police had a false confession from Chris Watts, so they needed to collect any vital clue to what really happened. And just take a look at how they gathered that evidence. Not one of the police officers had full protective gear on as to not cross contaminate the crime scene. Evidence was simply thrown in a black sack on top of one another. And the only piece of protection that the police had was latex gloves. They had zero regard for preservation of a crime scene and the place where Shanann, Bella and Cece were supposed to be murdered. In a professional crime scene investigation, the team going into that crime scene must wear the right gear, including footwear covers and masks. The consequences of an improper investigation include the lab work may fail, and then evidence to be thrown out by a judge. Guilty people could potentially go free and possibly kill again or the wrong innocent person gets punished or possibly sentenced to death. In a proper investigation, all evidence needs to be packaged separately, clearly labelled and sealed, unlike in the black sacks used inside the Watts family home, and especially any garments or blankets with biological evidence needs to be air dry in paper bags or envelopes. This is in order for cross contamination but also so mould doesn't start to destroy key evidence. The goal of CSIs is to find all relevant physical evidence so anything collected should be photographed, bagged and tagged and the only people that need to be at a crime scene should be present unlike in the Watts home, when we see on body cam footage, different officers coming and going. The stark contrast in what should have happened in a serious crime scene investigation and what we've witnessed with the Watts case is unbelievable. At no point did we see law enforcement in the correct gear, sifting through evidence or collecting samples correctly. And you have to remember, this house is where at the time they believed three people had lost their lives. It is the furthest thing away from a flawless investigation. If this case had gone to a trial, I believe the outcome to be very different to what actually occurred. How could any prosecution rely on the manner to which they investigated these murders? without the evidence to support what they were saying. They had nothing. Even after Chris's fake confession, his so-called defense team that were in the house and seen on body cam footage were at a loss to who had collected all the samples around the home. Even they didn't see where serious CSIs had gathered any evidence. Take a look and listen. It looks an organized chaos for what's going on. So I just hope we didn't cause too much of an issue with your process. Who did the trace recovery here? I'm sorry, what? Who did the trace recovery here? Who took the samples? I don't know. All law enforcement had was a false confession from Chris Watts, a so-called failed polygraph that we never actually got to see the results of and a theory from D.A. Rourke that was false. All based on no real proof as to his guilt. And if Chris hadn't accepted the plea deal and accepted responsibility for all three murders, what did they have? The answer is nothing. Thanks for watching.